right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to get into building lists. Uh, lists, I think, are one of the most important topics in app development in general. In Android, we call them the list view. In UI kit, you call them the table view or the UI table view, uh, but they're everywhere. So it's really important to understand how tables are built and lists are built. Uh, in UI kit, tables were a very challenging thing to do. And uh, in lists, I have to say, actually, Apple made it so easy to do. It was incredible. I was just blown away by how easy it is. There's still functionality missing, uh, but but for the most part, they've done a they've done a pretty decent job of creating of how to create lists. So uh, I am very impressed with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by building a new project. So iOS single view application. We're gonna hit next, and we're gonna call it uh, M4. Uh, P1 tables. Oh, sorry, lists. I keep. I'm gonna be calling it tables for a long time. Uh, it's gonna take me a while to change names. It's been so long since I've been building apps that yeah. So if I, if you hear me use the word table, I apologize. It's just a slip of the tongue. All right. Make sure user interface is uh, Swift UI. Hit next, and give it a home. All right. I'm gonna eliminate the preview. Or the peak. I don't. I don't want. Uh, I don't want to. I want to just keep to using the simulator on the side. Uh, so, what we're gonna do is we'll build off a home page, and what we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, four different examples of lists, and so I'm gonna have them as four separate so four separate content views. So let's keep it organized. We'll have a home page so you can navigate between the different pages, rather than have just one giant page and get confusing. So we have our content view page. We have hello world. I'm just gonna change all of this. I'm gonna en encompass a V stack. All right, we've got our hello world, close curly there, and we'll change hello world to give it like a little simple title by saying uh, lists, and in brackets, formerly known as tables. And let's put this inside a navigation view. All right, and put our closing curly there. All right, so we have a navigation view with a V stack and a text. Now, uh, that's our title. We're gonna add some buttons. And what I'm gonna do first is add a navigation link to our first simple list view. So I'm gonna say navigation link. And I'm gonna finish this in a minute. So I'm gonna leave it like that because well, we need a page to redirect to. So first off, because we have a bunch of content views, I'm gonna right click and say new group. And this group will be called content views. And I'm going to right click on content views and say new file. And it'll be iOS Swift UI view. And I'm going to call this first one my list view. All right. And let's just drag content view into, con into content views, the folder as well. All right, so we have here our uh, list view. What we're going to do is we're going to do a very basic list view just to get comfortable with it. Now, in uh, in the uh, table table view world, the UI kit world, this was a lot of heavy lifting. And you're going to see now we're going to build a very simple list uh, out of out of a very small bit of code. So, in fact, I'm kind of laughing a little bit because it's actually so little code that after years of building UI table views, I'm, I'm, still, in, I'm still beside myself about how little code I need to do this. So, the keyword is list, as you may guess. Open up set of curlies. We're going to do a very basic list of just text objects. So, we're going to say text, and I'm going to say monkey. So I use the characters for one of my games. Text. Donkey. Text. Llama. Text. EOT. Text. Nina. Text. 
voila text hita and text oops ion all right very simple text let's put a navigation uh, bar title here to say dot navigation bar title say uh, mkd2 uh, characters and they also belong to code llama as well so maybe we can just say that too all right now let's uh, go back to content view.swift let's finish off our navigation uh, for that so Right. We had started navigation link, and we want to do is say destination uh, my list view. All right, open some curlies. We'll just do simple basic text buttons for today. Uh, so we'll say text begin. All right, and let's add some dot padding there. All right. And we'll say 50. All right. And we should add a bar title. We'll just put home somewhere. Maybe at the end of a VStack. All right. Command S. Double check for errors. Looks like we're OK. Let's give it a run. There we go. Home and a list formerly known as tables. Let's hit begin. And there we go. We have all of our characters there. Looks like my title at the top is a little too long. Not really clickable. We'll get to clicking in a bit uh, towards the end of the video. But you can see here, you've got all the characters listed out. Very simple list, very basic list. And in the UI kit world, this would have taken a lot of heavy lifting. Let's look at doing uh, adding a little bit of functionality to this. Let's make it a grouped list view. Let's separate our characters into groups. But I'm going to do a separate page just to keep things broken and org or not broken, but organized, separated. So you have uh, so you have your uh, your knowledge in compartments. All right, we're going to use something called sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new content view. All right, so I'm going to right click on content views, say new file. And again, iOS Swift UI view. And this will be my grouped list view. All right, we'll hit create. And what we'll do here is we'll start off with list again. All right. So we'll say list. All right. Now I'm going to I'm going to separate uh, these eight characters into two groups. Uh, good guys and bad guys are just good and evil. And so let's say section will be the title. So let's say section header and uh, we'll put a footer in as well, just so that you can see uh, you can see what it is. So section uh, header will be text. Uh, we'll say good. Uh, footer will say uh, text end of good content i'm going to actually take out content and use a different overload there so i'm going to open up a set of curlies a different type of completion handler and then we'll list out our good guys so we'll say text monkey text donkey we'll say text llama and text, oops. EOT. All right, so these are our good guys. And what we'll do is we'll create another section after this. 
All right. We'll say section header. All right. Will be text evil. And then footer will be uh, text. You don't have to put footers in. I'm just showing you how to. So in case you need to know, uh, end of evil content I'll get rid of and open the curlies. In fact, let's get rid of that portion of the screen as well. All right, and there we go. So let's add our tech, our, our evil. So we'll say text, uh, yina, text, walla. We also have hita, And finally, ion. All right. Now let's give it also another navbar title. So at the end of list, we'll say dot navigation bar title. And this will be uh, grouped characters. All right. Now let's hit uh, run. Oh wait, we can't hit run until we add the link to the content view. So we've got to switch back to contentview.swift. We'll do another navigation link. So I'll put it right below. I had, I had asked you to add a dot padding of 50 because we're going to have a bunch of buttons like this throughout our exercise today. So navigation link and destination will be my group list view and we'll just put text again and say uh, grouped begin all right just so we have an idea of what we're clicking on and let's give it a shot all right so there's begin group begin and now we're seeing everything grouped and, and you may notice that end of good and end of evil, they look very similar to the footer, I mean, so to, the, to the cells anyway, right? And it's kind of misleading, kind of challenging to, uh, to decipher as a user. So you may not want to use footers, right? Unless you design the footers. We'll get into designing table cells or list cells uh, later. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, it's up to you if you really want to keep footers as, as a basic thing. All right. So now... Let's modify what we did, but use an array to do the same thing. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, we'll organize things into a, two arrays. So we'll say a uh, new file, again, iOS Swift UI view. And I'm going to call this uh, my array list view. And uh, let's uh, let's create two arrays. All right. So what I do first is say let good, which extends an array of strings. All right. Equal, and then we'll say monkey, donkey, llama. Yoti. All right. And then we'll say let evil, which is also string, equal Hina. Ion. All right, so we got our good and our evil. So now we already have our, our items in a in, in arrays. Uh, there's no point in listing them out one by one now. So now we can use a for each loop to do this. Now for each loops in Swift UI differ from for each loops in Swift. So if you know for each loops in Swift, Swift UIs are different. All right, so it's it's kind of weird to understand, but uh, we're gonna uh, they they've rearranged it for some reason. 
So let's build out our our body here by removing the text hello world. And we're going to say list again. And we'll do sections again. So section header. Uh, let's skip the footer. All right. So the header will be text good. And remove the content. I'm going to use the curly brackets. Now, here's what a for each loop look, looks like. We'll say for each. All right. You have to use capital for and capital E. All right. Open a set of round brackets. And we'll say good, comma, ID will be slash dot self. So I guess where is it located? Now you can open up your curly brackets and we'll say G in. All right, now this is kind of a sketchy line of code, all right, considering if you've never seen a for each loop in Swift UI. Uh, but in a nutshell, Good is the array, so this is good up here. This is the good we're, we're, we're pulling in to loop through. G is the variable that will represent each index in our loop, all right? And in basically is like begin, so go ahead and begin, all right? The ID is related to, I guess, saying where, is good, where does good exist? It exists here in self. That's, uh, I believe, what, it's, what ID is all about, okay? And all we're going to do is say text G. And that's it. Now let's do the same for the evil. All right, we'll say section header will be uh, text evil. Content I'll remove as well. Open our curlies. And we'll do another for each. And we'll say evil id will be slash dot self and then open our curlies and say e in and then we'll go with text for e all right let's give this a navigation bar title so we know where we stand if we're navigating in the app and we'll say dot navigation bar title will be characters grouped. Uh, actually, we need to. Is, this is going to get cut off. So characters, we'll just say array, just so we know what we're looking at. All right. Let's save this. Now we have to add a link to this in our content view, our home page. So we need to switch back to content view dot swift. All right, and let's add another navigation link. And we'll say destination will be my array. Oops. List view. Open our curlies and just do text. And we'll say begin array view. All right, let's give it a run. I have to stop and start again. All right, I forgot the padding, so you notice that the two buttons there, I'll fix that after we run it. Let's just verify this works. And there you go, we're, we're, it's the same output. I removed the footers and we're just, we're just seeing everything work, but through arrays this time for each loops and arrays. All right, let's add the dot padding just so for completeness. All right. All right. Now, we've seen that lists, they look very bland and boring, right? We want to dress things up a bit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the next step and make our arrays make our sorry make our table cells or list cells look uh look custom because you uh, when you look at uh all the other when you look at all kinds of list views or uh, lists out out in the real world with different apps they're not just simple lines typically they're they're uh, they may have a like if you look at spotify for example or uh, you might or or youtube you might see like an, an icon then you might see the title and then the subtitle 
right? So stuff like that. So we're gonna do something like that for, for this as well. So I'm gonna add a new content view. So a new file and then Swift UI view. I'm going to call this one my custom list view. All right. All right, so we're gonna need a couple of things here. So we created our custom list view, uh, but we're gonna need some images. And I'm go I have images for uh, pictures of each of the characters that, that I've depicted in this, uh, in this tutorial so far. Uh, you may want to grab like small little icon images just to represent uh, what we're about to do. Uh, it's so, or, or, you know, uh, whatever you feel like getting. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my images into my assets folder, the full file. So I'm going to click on assets first of all. And I've got my images. So let's just throw it there. Oops. All right, and just drag them all in, drag them back. All right, so I've got all my characters here. They're named accordingly, and they're in my assets file, so I'm ready to, to use them. So let's switch, switch over to my custom list view. If you have to pause the video, go ahead and pause and search for some images, but just small little icon images that'll serve the, serve the purpose for, for the application you're building alongside me. So we're in custom list view and what we need to do is we're going to represent each row as an object. So let's have an, let's have an object to represent each of these items. Okay, I'm going to start off with a struct up here. All right. I'm going to say struct. I'm going to call it uh, character. Actually, I'm worried that's, let's call it Kara, just in case, I, I believe character is a reserve word already. So let's call it Chara, right? It'll extend identifiable, all right? And we'll say var ID, which is equal to UU ID. So it'll just generate a unique value for it. So I don't have to worry about giving it an ID number. We'll say var name, which is a string, all right? We'll say var website which is also a string, all right? And we'll say var logo, which is a string. So we'll use the name of the file as for the logo, all right? So you kind of see with website, we're kind of gonna, we're gonna go somewhere with this. We're gonna, we're gonna show the character's personal website uh, by clicking on the cell eventually when we get, when we get done with this. So you kind of a, an idea there. All right, now before we start designing the list, Let's design the row. The row is going to have an icon on the left and then two lines of text beside, beside it, one above the other, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to have another struct to represent our row. Now, for those of you coming from the UI kit world, when you've seen tables, you, this, is your, this is the portion where you're designing your UI table view cell. Right? If, you, if you've already done tables. So this will be considered the UI table view cell portion. All right? So we're gonna say struct. I'm gonna call it uh, char row extends a view. All right? And I'll say var chara with a lower C extends chara with a capital C. Now we'll get into our body. So var body extends some view, the capital V there. All right, so we've got our, so we need to have our body for this. this is gonna represent one cell. What we're about to type into this body is one cell. We still have our custom list view. This is gonna represent where the list is gonna go. The list is here, the list cell is here. So I'm gonna say, let's put a comment here. This is list cell. Uh, define and we'll say list define okay just so we separated the things and if you want to be complete we'll say list object define object data define for data okay 
All right. Now let's start into our body. Okay. So we're going to have a horizontal stack because we're going to have an image on the left and two lines of text on the right. So we'll start with an H stack. Okay. Open our curlies. All right. And let's start with our image. So we'll say image. We'll say team, sorry, uh, chara dot logo. And then we'll say dot rendering mode will be dot original. And I'm going to fit the frame. So I'll just say dot frame. Well, we already had the autocomplete there. Let's see if I can steal that. There we go. Uh, we'll say width is, we'll just narrow it down to like 45 pixels by 45 pixels. Alignment will be dot center. All right. And we'll give it a padding of 20. All right. So that's our image. Now for the two lines of text, the name and the website, we're gonna need a V stack to put them one above the other. So we'll say V stack, all right? And we'll say text will be chara.name. And we'll add some characteristics to this text. We'll just say dot font. We'll use the headline font, so dot headline, all right? And we'll say, I mean, we don't, this is kind of not necessary, but just in case, we'll say dot foreground color will be dot black. All right. And then we'll say dot multi line text alignment will be dot leading uh, because we want it to be left justified. By default, texts are, are centered, so we don't want that. And we're also going to add a dot frame by saying that the width will be 300. Now these numbers are arbitrary. Uh, height is 30, alignment dot leading as well. All right, uh, what we're doing here is we don't want the text to be centered. We want these two lines of code to represent having our text being on the left to sort of line up and, and kind of hug the, uh, the logo itself. All right, so, so that's what we're working with here. All right, uh, so that's our first text I'm just going to scroll up here so we got our first text which is going to be the name of the character our second text will be the website for the character all right uh, we're going to say text uh, team dot website sorry chara dot website we'll say dot font will be subheadline okay dot foreground color will be dot blue. All right, uh, we'll skip the multi-line text alignment, just go straight to dot frame. And we'll see the frame is uh, 300 uh, by 30 and also dot leading. Okay, and that's it. Now, for navigation bar title, put that here and we'll say dot navigation bar title. Uh, we'll say characters. All right. Now, how do we apply this? All right. Now, how do we apply this? So we've got our cell. We need to define it as a list. First thing we do is let's actually define it as an array. So we talked about arrays already. Let's, uh, we've, already, we've already learned how to build it out as an array. Let's do the same thing. So inside our list, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're going to first define. So we're gonna say, give us some space there. We'll say, let characters, which extends an array of characters or character. All right, actually, see, that's purple. That's a reserve word. I just double check what I called it. I called it Chara. So let's, uh, let's be very careful here. All right, so you can see why I called it Chara. And actually, I'm going to, just for consistency, call this Chara as well with a lowercase c. All right, let that equal, open a, an array uh, 
array uh, square bracket. And I'll use a new line to start defining things. I'm going to say chara of, and there's my autocomplete. I don't need the UUID. Let's go with the second one. So nice thing is that I just defined a class and it auto generated the constructor. It auto generated even the autocomplete for me here. So that's the beauty of it. So we'll say monkey website will be HTTP s colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash monkey. All right. Logo is monkey. All right. That's the name of the logo. All right. Now Chara. And again, this time we'll do donkey. Website is HTTPS colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash donkey. Logo is donkey. Chara. Now, of course, it's complaining. It's not even auto completed for me because I forgot the comma between objects. There we go. Let's see if it'll auto complete for me. There. So, llama website is HTTP s colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash llama logo is llama all right so i know the images whatever image so you may want to pause and double check your image names so that uh, they line up right whatever image name you're using for logo those are the file names for my images so that's why uh, that's why you see me using the same name here as well. And then we'll do Chara. I know I forgot my comma again. All right, so let's fix that. All right, so we did Llama. Now we're going to do Yoti. HTTPS colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash EOT. Logo is EOT. All right. Now, Chara. And we'll say Yina. Logo Zena, Chara, almost there. Yot, sorry. Uh, Walla. one for Chara is Hita and website of course I could have had like some simple string appending or do, done something different uh, but just for consistency's sake that's why I did it this way because the website could change anytime uh, but yeah, there are, of course, better ways than, than me writing it out like this over and over again. Finally, ion. So last one. All right, so we got all of our characters in. That was the hard part. No errors. Everything looks good. Notice I'm using HTTPS websites, and there's a reason for that. And if you're gonna if you're gonna use an HTTP website, uh, I'm gonna talk about something that an issue that'll come up in a little bit. All right, uh, but for now we have all of our characters listed out. Now let's go ahead and and build this. So the nice thing is that because we've already put it in an array, I'm not gonna use any sections this time. So be less work will be to say uh, list of teams 
t in. So here we're doing something a little bit different than a for each loop. We'll say, sorry, not teams, list of chara, all right? Say in, I guess uh, call it C in, and we'll say Chara, and it's actually Char row. There we go. Chara, um, C. All right, and that's it. Let's give it a run and see if it works. Because that's all, like the, the list view, it's gonna list loop through, we're passing in the char array, it's got all its data, we're, passing, we're telling it to use char row, and that's it. But we forgot to create a navigation link to this page. So there's nothing to click on right here. So let's uh, stop it again. Let's go back to content view and let's add in navigation link here. All right, we'll say destination is my custom list view. All right, put a text for button and we'll say begin custom view. Add some padding of 50 again. All right, give it a run. There's our button. And that's pretty big. <laughs> that's pretty big. But yes, the idea is there. The images are, are huge. We have to scale them down. So let's fix that. So when you're running this for the first time, you're going to see a little bit of debugging might be needed for, for what we're working on. All right. Now, we noticed that our images are way too big, a little bit of debugging to do. So if we revisit our row design, all right, look at image, all right? Our image, our logo here, this is our definition for it. We use rendering mode original, all right? Now it's gonna paint the image in its original size, which is no good for us, right? So just to call it up again, let's just have a look one more time. All right, so you can see here like, whoa, these characters are huge, right? They're just messing things up. So we need to scale them down to the size of our frame, which is 45 by 45. So we're gonna take out rendering mode original. We've done this in our past videos where we've scaled down our, or scaled up or scaled down our images to fit our screen. We're gonna change this to dot resizable, all right? And dot scale to fill. All right, now let's try that again. All right. So we'll go begin custom view. And there you go. Our, our, our images are all there. Our text is lined up, but we're missing an image, which will probably happen to you too. It's very common. I would look at the spelling of the image name. So let's investigate that. Let's fix that as well. All right. So let's scroll down to where I defined our, my characters. So Llama has, is missing its, it's, it's missing its logo, all right? And uh, I already noticed that I added one too many A's to Llama on the website. I know it's gonna be an error in a moment, so we'll fix that. Uh, but here we got Llama. Now let's go to assets.assets .assets and see what was going on there. Ah, I can see right now. This is Llama with only one A. All right, a little bit of a misspell there, uh, but I'm not gonna fix the file name, or actually, no, let's actually fix the file name. 
So the beauty of assets is that I can rename this. So let's just rename this. I'm gonna right click and go to rename. Or actually not even right click, just double click. There we go. Done. All right, now let's run this again. So I'll switch back to custom view there. Run it again. All right, begin custom view. And there we go, there's Llama. She was missing, now she's back. And we can swipe up and down. All right. All right, now you notice that I've put URLs here as the subtext, all right? Now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to click on these cells, redirect to a new content view, and have it load a website, okay? So let's create a new content view and configure the website and then come back here and we'll finish this off. So I'm going to right click and add a new file. Again, Swift UI view. I'm gonna call it my custom list detail view. All right, so that, there you go. Now, in our past videos, we talked about if we want to load a website, we need to use a WebKit view. In the UI kit world, this was straightforward, really easy to do. In Swift UI, like I was saying in the past, it's not finished. It's they're still building out Swift Apple still building out Swift UI. So there's functionalities that's missing. And a web displaying a website using WebKit view is one of those casualties right now. So what they do is they created an object called UI view representable to basically be like a bridge or an intermediary to pull in UI kit code into the Swift UI world. All right. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to define our WebKit view uh, as a web view here. And I'm actually going to uh, get rid of the, the detail previews struct as well. So while we're at it, let's just dump this. Now, before anything, we need to import web kit because that has all our WebKit stuff in there. Now let's go ahead and start defining our new struct. All right, so we're going to say struct web view with a lowercase v extends UI view representable. And we'll say let URL extend URL. Say func make UI view, all right? Now I'll let it autocomplete there. I'm gonna modify the context. All right, we'll say UI view representable context and in angle bracket say web view with a lowercase v, all right? And then it'll return not some UI view that's generic. I mean, it probably will work, but let's be specific and say WK web view. That's what we're returning. Okay, a WK web view object. Now this first method, uh, you know what? Let's, let's talk about the two methods here again, just to review, all right? So this is, we need this method and we need one more. We need a func update UI view. Now I'll hit enter to autocomplete and let's modify the arguments there because that we want them related to this uh, web view application. We'll say web view of type, not view I view type, but instead WK web view. All right, context will be same as what I put above. So UI view representable context, angle brackets, web view with lowercase v. All right, this is, this is uh, how it's gonna be formatted. Okay, so now what are these two methods? These are two support methods we need to get this thing up and running. The first method, make UI view, think of it kind of like a constructor in a way. It's gonna execute code upon creating this object and getting it ready to go. So, you can, so here's where you would create and configure your WebKit view. And then the second method, update UI view, is where we would actually write code just to, if a change happened to this object, 
what do we need to do to refresh this object? That's what it's all about. So we've already defined our URL. Let's define our, our, two, uh, our two methods. So we'll start with make UI view, all right? Now there's three steps here to getting a website to display in a WebKit view. And we've already defined our URL object. There's actually four now. Uh, we would have in the UI kit world, we would have dragged a WebKit view into the storyboard. And that would have been our definition of a WebKit view. Uh, but here we have to instantiate it because we're doing it purely in code. So we're going to say let web view equal WK web view instantiated. All right. So it's actually four steps now because of that. Uh, now we need a URL request object. We already have a URL object that's going to be passed into this object. So it's defined as our let above there. Uh, we're going to need a URL request object. It's the manager object that goes and makes the request to the web server of the website we're looking for, grabs the data, brings it back. So we're going to say let request equal URL request. And we'll, uh, you know, you could use URL, you use the cache policy. Well, actually, let's, let's be a little bit more specific here. Let's say URL will be self.url and cache policy, all right? The cache policy will be dot return cache uh, else load. So it'll allow us to go into our cache so we don't have to wait too long for, uh, for this thing to load because it can be slow and tedious. If we already have the website cached, why not, all right? And then finally, uh, web view dot load uh, our request, all right? So that says, go ahead and make it happen. Now we need to return web view. All right. Now let's do our update UI view. So we're going to say, now all we have to do is just modify the request. There's nothing else to define. So we'll say let request equal URL request and We'll just say self.url comma cache policy is dot return cache else load. All right. And web view dot load for request. All right. All right. Now it's giving me an error and that's because Auto, again, like I said before, sometimes autocomplete is just not your best friend. Um, I wanted to hit enter, I accidentally did, and I apologize for this. Let's get rid of the word type. All right, everything's happy now. All right, I just thought because my methods weren't complete, it was complaining. Now I went back, had a quick look. We had the dot type in there, it didn't like that. All right, now this is our structure for our WebKit view. All right, it's ready to go. All we have to do is bring it in. All right, so now we're gonna bring it in above. All right, right here. So first let's rep, let's grab, uh, let's, let's create a variable. So we'll say var, uh, we'll say chara extends chara. All right, these objects were defined in the other view, but they're accessible here. Now let's define a URL address. Let's, so let's say let URL address. So let's just define a URL object equals a URL. Now I'm going to preload it with just Google. So we'll say HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.ca. All right. And now let's go ahead and do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually put the website in text and have the WebKit view right below it. So I need a V stack. So I'll say V stack. All right. And we have our text. All right. Now the thing is when we call this, our object will be passed in. All right. So what I'm going to say is, Uh, for text, char URL uh, is, and then slash round brackets, chara.website. 
All right. The, so I'll display the website we're gonna navigate to. And also we need a, we need to just launch our web view. So web view with lowercase v, open round bracket, URL will be URL of, and then string uh, chara dot website. All right, now let's add in a navigation bar title. We're missing a closing curly for our V stack. Let's fix that. All right, uh, let's add in a dot navigation bar title. And we'll just put in straight slash chara dot name. All right. Oh, we're missing uh, exclamation marks. This goes to the, so let's uh, let's fix that and add an exclamation mark there. So we're all good. Now, realistically, it looks like we really didn't need URL address. We weren't gonna use it in the first place. I'm gonna just dump that, all right? Looks like everything is neat and tidy. Everything's there. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's use this thing. So how do, we, how do we use this thing now? Well, we gotta go back to custom list view. Right, gotta go back to custom list view and back to where we define our char row. So we're inside custom list view. We're inside our body. We did a list of chara for C in and we did our char row. All we have to do is just wrap this in a navigation link. Now, for those of you guys in the UI kit world, you had to create a separate method to do this, a did select row type thing. And now we don't do that here. We do a navigation link, all right? destination will be my custom list detail view open round brackets it's going to auto complete chara will be c all right let's open our curly and close our curly here and tab this in all right let's give this a run So begin custom list view. Let's click on uh, monkey. There's our URL. Let's be a little patient and wait. There we go. Loading indicator. So you can see that's his website. All right. Hit back. Let's try donkey. A little bit slow to load. There we go. Looking good, looking good. We got our websites up and running. All right. Let's try like Walla. There we go. And there you have it. All right. So this is it. This is our introduction to this. We did quite a, quite a bit today. Uh, we started with just a very basic list, just some words. Then we expanded into groups. Then we expanded to using arrays. Then we expanded to creating our own custom cell, which is where the fun really begins. And then be able to click on a cell to navigate to a new page. All right, so that's it for list today. Uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>